I S U P K. To the family, brother Red Pill representing on the ledge. Do me a favor, family. Make sure you subscribe to I S U P K on YouTube. Get some of that fire that the brothers are delivering. Some of that good information. All right. Brah. But we have been destroyed for the lack of knowledge of our own constitution. And for, since 1969, the National UK has been saying the white man is the devil. That's right. And what does that mean? Does that mean he's a little a red man in the, in the center of the earth with horns and a pitchfork and a tail? No. <clears throat> devil means deceiver. And we have been deceived and we don't know who we are. So under Commander General Yohanna, <clears throat> under Christ, we have been coming out here to break up our people. Let you know who you are. Let you know the destruction that's coming down on America. Let you know that you have to come out of America and be holy unto the blood to the Lord. And you get that, brother? And we all know we've been so destroyed and we don't know understand what's going on with us. We've been destroyed by people. But when we came over here on slave ships, we came over here and we were sold unto the white man. That's why in Deuteronomy 28 and 68 said you we, we will be sold unto our enemies. So, so right now, we come out to wake our brothers and sisters up, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians of the world, to let you know that you have a king that's coming for you in Christ. That you are that nation that are destroyed in the Bible, that you don't know who you are. But that you have been destroyed, destroyed by the white man. And destruction is coming for the white man. And it's all in the Bible. Read that, brother. The Book of Lamentations! Chapter 4, verse 22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. Damn. Now you got to understand. You got to get all that Christianity out of your mind about the Bible being for everybody. It's a message right to the Israelites. We have been so destroyed. The Israelites, <clears throat> there have been, it's 18 nations of people on the earth. There is the, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians out of Israelites. We've been in captivity under 17. 17 nations of people on the earth and we don't know who we are so now God has given you a message and he said the punishment of your of your iniquity is accomplished it means it's over read on O daughter of Zion O daughter of Zion he's talking to the Israelites O daughter of Zion that says to you black man Hispanic man the native Indian man read on brother he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will no more carry us away into captivity because we were carried by the white man to America in captivity. We were, we were brought here to America but for punishment because while we stopped keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of this Bible, and that's why God put us in his captivity. That's why all the slave ships, we came over here on slave ships, and like Deuteronomy 28 and 68 says, we'll be sold to our enemies, the white man. Well, God said, I'll, I'll put the punishment that he punished us. He said, it's accomplished. It's over. He will no longer carry us away into captivity. Read on, brother. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will visit thy iniquity, thy sins. He will visit the sins, O daughter of Edom. Who is Edom? Edom is the white man in the Bible. The Edomites, Adumia, those type of things, those, those are the white man in the Bible. Now, God said he's going to turn, he's going to turn his attention on the white man. And he's going to uncover his sins. All the wickedness that he's done, he's going to bring it up. He's going to bring it out. 
This is what the Bible's about. We gotta get all that Christianity out of our mind. All that Christianity about the white Jesus coming back saving us. The white Jesus walking around, being, Jesus being white, period. We gotta get come away from that. Because the Bible tells you that Christ is so black as if he burned in a furnace with woolly hair. But yet that's the satanic rituals of Christianity. Have you believing that this white man right here, Caesar Borgia, is Jesus Christ? And that's how you destroy a nation. People that are so loyal and so royal, you take their God away from them. You take their king away from them and say they are another people. So that's how the white man destroy us. So God said he's going to pay them back for that. He said our punishment is over now. It's accomplished. Now he's going to turn his attention on the white man. And he's going to discover his sins. So that's why with the white man, all the things that he's done, all the wickedness that he's done, is being brought out right now. And that's what it, under the, uh, the ISUBK, under Commander Jerry Hanna, that's what we do. To wake our brothers and sisters up and let you know why are we calling the white man the devil the Bible speaks of. Because it's right in the Bible. Why do we come out and speak against the wickedness that's been done to us? Now, he said, oh, daughter of Zion, he's going to discover thy sins. He's going to discover all what the white man has done to us. He all the white, what the evil that the white man done to the earth is going to be brought out. That's what the Bible's about. Now, brother, give me Isaiah 14 and 21, brother. God is saying what this Bible's about. Who is God talking to? Who was it for? It was for the Israelites. It wasn't for everybody on the planet. That's why when we come out, you look at us strange. We get all the strange looks at us. Why are those men standing on the corner hard right there? Why are they talking saying the white man is the devil the Bible speaks of? That's well, because it's in the Bible. That's and we letting you know and breaking it down to you, precept upon precept, letting you know what's going to destruction is coming to the white man and why we tell you to separate from him. Read that, brother. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 21. Prepare slaughter. Now, God says prepare slaughter. Now, if we make everybody talking to everybody on the planet, how can you prepare slaughter for everybody on the planet? I mean, come on, who's going to be doing the slaughter? I mean, come on. It's not even making sense. But God says prepare slaughter. Read on. For his children. For his children. Who here? Who are his? Who is, who is God talking about when he said prepare slaughter for his children? Whose children? Who, when you came with your slave ships, who were you sold to? You were sold to the white man. So God says prepare slaughter for his children. All the time we get, well, you get white people say, oh, I didn't put you in slavery. I didn't own no slaves. Well, God says prepare slaughter for his children. That means every white man walking on the street, right? You are what God is talking about. The white man's children. The slave owner's children. God said prepare slaughter for his children. Why? For the 400 years of slavery, that's why. For the way we get murdered in the streets right now, that's why. That's why God says prepare slaughter. It's talking to you, it's you black man. It's telling you to separate from the white man. Understand what's going on in this Bible. He's talking to you and it's a message to you, to a black man, telling you to separate, prepare slaughter. Because if you're preparing slaughter for somebody, what are you doing? You're getting away from him. If a brother, in the, if a brother in the hood, if he got somebody, he got a beef with somebody, we automatically stay away from him. Why? Because he got a bullet with his name on it. And so, man, he knows one day if you were him, then you got to get away from him. Because why are you going to die with him? Well, God says prepare slaughter for his children, telling you to get away from the white man. Prepare slaughter. Separate. The Bible is all about separation. God is a separatist. God is a separatist. He says holy. We have been holy unto him. Holy means to be separated. It doesn't mean like what they say in the Christian church. Jumping around like you got a bunch of demons on you. Now you already got a holy demon on you in the Christian church. But God says now. He says prepare slaughter for his children. For the white man's children. For all the wickedness that he's done. Prepare slaughter for his children. Why? Because you got so many say I didn't, I didn't have no slaves. I'm a good white man. I love white. I love black people. Well, God says prepare slaughter for you because you are the ancestors of the slave masters. You are the ones that killed us and enslaved you. 
and butchered us. All types of ways, all types of atrocities that were done to us. You are his children. So God says prepare slaughter for them. Read on. For the iniquity of their fathers. Say it again, brother. For the iniquity of their fathers. For the sins of their fathers. This is what the Bible's about. The Bible's about God's vengeance for the Israelites. It's about what we've been slaughtered. We were in slavery. Well, God says for every slave master, prepare slaughter for his children. For every slave master that had us, that whipped us out back, had us in the cotton fields, God said, prepare slaughter for his children. Read, brother. That they do not rise. That they do not rise. He means, we see the way, we're not gonna do nothing to the white man. The black man is not gonna do nothing to the white man. What we're gonna do is prepare brothers to come or was fall away from the white man. We tell brothers to understand that they then can't be joined with the white man. We, we tell brothers and sisters that they can have their, we, they are the Israelites of the Bible. And God said to be separated from them. So we tell brothers to separate themselves from the white man. So it says prepare slaughter for his children that they do not rise. Why? Because when Christ comes, Christ is going to destroy the white man. We're not telling nobody to pick up guns and go shoot the white man. We don't do that type of thing. That's not the ISUBK, it's not about that. We're not about shooting no white men, no. We're about waking white blacks and Hispanics and Native Indians up. We're about waking up, letting you know who you are. Letting you know that you are the true Israelites of the Bible. And not the bastard over in Israel who calls himself a Jew. And the solution to the problem is to separate from the white man and all the other heathens on the earth. That's what, That's what the Bible is about. But the black man, the Hispanic man, and the Native Indian man are so destroyed. We are so destroyed. The white man did a good job of destroying the nation of Israel. Because now you got a white man in Israel, in Israel calling himself you. This is how destroyed we are. Well, God says prepare slaughter for him. That he do not rise. Because why? When Christ comes and destroys the white man, God don't want the white man to rise ever again. So God says that, that he do not rise. And see, Christ is going to destroy him. And see, we so destroyed that when we say that, that Christ is coming, well, black people look at us like we saying Santa Claus is coming to town. Because you know if, uh, a fat white man on the sled um, I'm gagged by reindeers is not going to come out of the sky. We know that. Well, the white man has destroyed us so bad that when we say Christ is coming, you look at us, black people look at us the same way. Well, we letting you know right now that God said prepare slaughter for him, that they do not rise. Because when Christ comes and destroys the white man, God don't want him to rise ever again. Read on, brother. Nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Nor possess the land or fill their face with cities. And when it says prepare slaughter, how do you prepare slaughter? Like I said before, what? You separate. If a brother, a brother in the, in the hood got a got a bullet, got a got a bullet on his on his on his neck, got a bullet with his name on it, and you know he is, somebody else is out to get him, you're gonna get away from him. It's gonna be word around the hood. Hey, stay away from the, hey, stay away from hey, stay away from Joe, man. Because why? Man, you know the other brothers, they coming down on him. Well, you stay away from him. Well, this is what we're telling you to separate from the white man or from the white man. Because the Bible tells you to separate. Be holy unto him. That's what, that's what you have to separate. Don't celebrate the holidays. This is so wicked. This is what, this is what it means by come out of it and separate from it. Well, it's no, not one black man, Hispanic or Native Indian should have been celebrating Thanksgiving. Because the Bible tells us not to celebrate the customs of the heathens, that, the land that we are in. That's right. But what do we do? We got all that turkey. All those, all that mac and cheese. We had no business doing that. Because that's how you prepare slaughter. You prepare slaughter for when you, and, and from coming out of those holidays. What was that, sir? And what, the, oh, the thoughts are wise, sir. What do we have to be thankful for? As a people. As a people. See, we gotta understand it. We gotta understand it. When we talk about what we wanna raise about people, 
And as a people, I know we getting killed in the, in the streets. I know black men are being slaughtered in the streets. What in the world how I, do I have to be thankful for? Thankful for they shooting a brother eight times in the back while he run? Thankful for strangling a boy in broad daylight? We don't have nothing to be thankful for because why we are oppressed people. We don't worry about times of oh, to have to have a Thanksgiving. If one brother is getting is getting oppressed in this place, I can't be happy. We can't be happy. We got to feel for our brothers and for our people. And we so destroyed, so that's why it says prepare slaughter for his children. That they do that rise. Because why we are so destroyed in this place. We want to do have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and we are still destroyed. You think you you have a Thanksgiving when Christ comes, when we deliver us out of this madness that we are in. You celebrating the holiday, the holiday that it's just the slaughter of 77 million Native Indians. What? That's what Thanksgiving is about. And that's how destroyed we are. Because those Native Indians, brothers and sisters, are your our brothers and sisters. So we had no business celebrating Thanksgiving. I don't care what they tell the lie that the white man told us about Thanksgiving, about the pilgrims and the Indians sitting down. No, they were not sitting down. They were being, the Indians were being slaughtered by the white man. That's, right. That's what Thanksgiving was about. But yet we are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because the white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. That's right. And devil means deceiver. That's right. We have been deceived nationwide and all over the earth. Thinking that the white man is our friend and that the white man is Jesus Christ. When you look in the Bible, the Bible says Christ is so black as if he burned in a furnace with woolly hair. Right. But yet you see this picture of Caesar Borgia in the earth as Jesus Christ. The white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. That's right. And he's been the devil since the beginning of the earth. Since he came into the earth, he's been the devil, the deceiver. And this is what the ICBK under Commander Jerry Hunter is on every street corner nationwide and in other countries telling you black man, Hispanic man, Native Indian man, you are the true Israelites of the Bible. Right. And destruction is coming to the white man that's right. by the hands of Jesus Christ. And, see, and that's a good thing. Don't sit there and try to hope for America. No, America is sinking like the Titanic. Right. And praise be to the Most High. That's what we that's what we live for. That's what we want. This and this place is going down because why? We've been in captivity. 400 years plus. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Black man, don't think you I think you're not oppressed. You're still oppressed and we're still in captivity. Right this very moment. Uh, even though you got Negroes running up and down right inside the MCI Center, getting paid million dollars with those number million dollar slaves. That's all they are. That's right. So God said, for destroying these people, for being the devil the Bible speaks of, God said he's going to destroy you, and when he destroys you, he don't ever want the white man to rise again. That's right. So black man, you got to understand, this is your constitution. Black man, Hispanic man, Native Indian man, you are the true Israelites of the Bible. And not the bastard over in Israel who calls himself a Jew. And we come out here to wake you up, because right now, you're walking sleep. You sleep out here. You think you're awake, but no, you sleep. Because you don't know who you are or where you come from. And we've been so destroyed by the white man. Man, do you know who you are, black man, Hispanic man, the name of any man? Anybody. Do you know who you are? No cheating. Stop looking on the sign up here. I see, I see, looking on the sign up here. So cheating. <laughs> you gotta understand who you are, black man, Hispanic man, Native American man, because we've been so destroyed. We have been destroyed. The white man took our constitution, the Holy Bible, and this is why black people come and say, "Oh, that's the white man's book," because the white man took it from us and made it a religion, Christianity. This is why you have the homosexuals in the Catholic Church right. running around talking about, "Oh, this is that," and this is why you have that picture everywhere in the earth. We are the destroyed nation that the Bible talk about. And so, and, and it's, it's a one, when you come into the ICBK under command of Hanna, because I've been at, I can speak for myself because I was in the church my whole life. My father was a pastor, but when I came in here, I, I found out that I wasn't even reading the Bible. I found out I didn't even know what was in the Bible. I found out my mother and father died knowing that, knowing, that, knowing that they were true Israelites of the Bible. 
Now how satanic is that? And you run to church every Sunday. Well, God is talking to the white man right here. He said, prepare slaughter for his children. He letting you know, black man, that you don't have to go out and pick up a gun to shoot the white man because Christ is going to take him out. Christ said, prepare slaughter for his children that they do not rise or fill the fates with cities. So they won't go and build up the way they build it up in D.C. and across the nation. Now, brother, give me, give me Exodus, Exodus 21 and 16, brother. We got to understand what's been done to us. What's been done to us, black man, Hispanic man, and Navy Indian man? Like I said, it, there are 18 nations of people on the earth. The nation, the true nation of Israel, black man, Hispanic man, and Navy Indian man, you have been captivity, been in captivity under 17 of them. That's every, every, every heathen nation on the earth. The so-called black man, Hispanic man, and Navy Indian man has been a captive under these heathen nations in the earth. Under everybody. Everybody. The white man, the African, the Chinese man, the Japanese man. <clears throat> Go ahead, brother. Read. You got that? Read that, brother. Excuse me. Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. And he that stealeth a man. And he that stealeth a man. That sounds like a white man, doesn't it? He that stealeth a man. Read on. And stealeth him. And stealeth him. Well, who was stolen and sell and sold? Who stood up here just like me and his brother stand up here and they sold us to the white man? Huh? Gotta understand, black man, this is your constitution. This is your this is all about you. Black man, Hispanic man, or Native Indian man. We were taken, taken from our, our um, <clears throat> we came out of Jerusalem and we were sold. We were sold. That was saying, if you still the man, it's telling you. It's letting you know, black man, that it's some destruction coming to the white man. It's God is talking to the white man. If you still the man, read on. Or if he be found in his hand. And be found in his hand. Well, we still in the white man's hand. Huh? We are still in the white man's hands. We still in captivity under the white man. If you still the man and we be found in, and you be found in his hand, read on. He shall surely be put to death. Oh, say that again, brother. He shall surely be put to death. Well, we supposed to come together with the white man. He shall surely be put to death. Oh, all white people not bad. He shall surely be put to death. He shall surely be put to death. Damn. Understand, black man, Hispanic man, neighbor, and the man. This devil out here, the, oh yeah. He be gonna be gonna be you'll be put to death by the most high God in Christ. That's who he's gonna be put to death by. We're not gonna go and go kill him. No, God is gonna kill him. Understand, black man, that's why it's for his joy. It's for you to understand who you are and keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of this Bible. Don't keep the Thanksgiving and Christmas and all these wicked holidays because these are not your holidays. God calls them your feast. He said, I hate your feast days. Matter of fact, brother, give me that. Give me um, Amos um, 5 and 21, brother. God is saying how destroyed we are and who we are. God just said, if you still for man and he be found in his hands, he shall be surely be put to death. Damn. God is going to put the white man to death for our captivity, for our slavery, for the cotton fields, for getting our backs whipped. That's right. All that. God is going to put him to death for that. You understand? Then you can, it's a lovely book when you understand it and you know what it's about. But when you don't know what it's about, you think it's a religious book. You go to church and say hallelujah, thank you Jesus. You don't even know you are the Israelites that the Bible's talking about. You can't even appreciate it. But you can't appreciate it when you understand it. It's you. It's your salvation in this, in this Bible. It's talking about you from Genesis to Revelation. Understand who you are, black man, Hispanic man, and native Indian man. Yeah. And it's 5 and 21, brother. Yeah, we gotta understand. Man. You get that, brother? And as we as we go, and we go to celebrate Thanksgiving and everything, and praying to God over that over that disgusting turkey and that glazed ham and that mac and cheese. Well, what did God say about Thanksgiving? Read, brother. 
Amos chapter 5, verse 21. I hate. Oh, God said he hate? I thought hate wasn't in the Bible. Read on, brother. I hate. I despise your feast days. God said he hate and he despise your feast days. When he said your, he not talking about his feast days. His feast days are in the Bible. Just like how Hanukkah is coming up. That the Jewish man calls Hanukkah. That's our feast day. Well, God said, I hate, I despise your feast days. Your feast days. He letting you know that he hate our feast days. Because why? Our feast days is nothing but the white man's celebrations. That's all it is. Thanksgiving is the slaughter of 77 million Native Indians. And that's what we just celebrated. That was a crime unto God and unto your Native Indian brothers and sisters that get slaughtered that we celebrated Thanksgiving. God said, I hate, I despise your feast days. Read on. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. You will not smell in your solemn, solemn assemblies. That means he not smelling that disgusting glazed ham. He not smelling that turkey and that stuffing. All them and them pot greens. He not smelling that garbage. Because why? He said, I hate and despise your feast days. This is what the Bible is about, black man, Hispanic man, Native Indian man. Your constitution, your laws, and your salvation. Because Christ only died for you and he's only coming back for you. No matter what the white man has deceived you with, with the wickedness of Christianity. And God said he hate and he despised your feast days. And we went until we celebrated Thanksgiving big. Man, I was in the store, come on, the store at shelves clean. And who was mostly in there, I see? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Say, and then watching the TV, praying over that disgusting dinner that God just said he hates in the Bible. Amos 5 and 21. God said, I hate and despise your feast days. Then if God hate and despise it, what, why the hell are we still keeping it? You got to understand it. This Bible is about us. Tell your laws, your statutes and commandments that God have for us. So we won't be destroyed. And God said, I hate and despise your feast days. Great brother, give me, give me Isaiah um, 13 and 9, brother. You got to understand what this Bible is about. What this Bible is about. This place is a lovely book. And why we come out and speak and wake up our, our brothers and sisters? Because who else is going to do it? Your Christian church is not going to do it. Is Creflo Dollar going to do it? Is T.D. Jakes going to do it? Jesse Jackson and all the rest of them pimps in the pulpit? No, they're not. But the eyes you became under Commander General Hanna, under Christ, is going to come out here and wake up black man and Hispanic man and Native Indian men to let you know that you are the true Israelites of the Bible. And destruction is coming to the white man and the earth. Destruction is coming. You got that, brother? Give me that, brother. So your Christianity I always talk about, oh, they, they, they want to go to heaven and Christ's going to come and all that type of, Christ's going to come, the white Jesus, because when they talk about Christ, they not seeing a black man, it's in the Bible. When the, when the Christian church talks about Jesus, they talk about that picture right there. Caesar Borgia, Jesus Christ. That's what Christianity talks about. They not talking about what the black the Bible says. A black man is so dark as if he burned in a furnace with woolly hair. Christianity is not talking about that Christ. They are talking about the white Jesus coming to save us. And that's what you give to a slave. You give a slave hope. A hope that one day the same man is beating your back, shooting you in the back, doing all types of wickedness to you, is going to one day save you. And that's not going to happen. This is why we come out here and wake blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians and let you know that this Bible is your constitution. Now, brother, give me that. Let's just uh, let's read about what Christianity always talks about. Jesus coming and taking everybody to heaven in a cloud. Let's see if that's in the Bible. Or is it and that's going to be such a nice day? The sky's going to open up and see the boy Jesus is going to come out of the clouds. And he's going to be white. No, the Bible's not talking about that. Read, brother. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 13, verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Cruel. Oh, slow down, brother. It says the day of the Lord, when Christ comes, comes cruel. Well, cruel doesn't mean nice. 
It says comes crude. That means it's going to be some old, oh, some stuff that people are going to say, oh, why you do that? Oh, why the head go off like that? Man, good. Oh, why that happened? Oh, snap. Oh, <laughs> why that happened? It's going to come crude. Read, brother. Cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. Wrath and fierce anger. Well, I guess I guess Christianity thinks <laughs> Christ's gonna come. He's gonna be smiling. <laughs> He's gonna be smiling, and loving everybody. It says wrath and fierce anger. That means God is angry. He's gonna send Christ to just take out and be this man, chopping off heads. That's what that's what the Bible's talking about. But all these years we've been going to Christian, going to Christian church. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Not knowing what's in the Bible, not knowing the Bible is our constitution, not knowing that Christ is a black man, not knowing that the Israelites are black people, not knowing that the day of the Lord is going to come cruel with wrath and anger of the Lord. It's not going to come nice, and the white Jesus come down and take everybody to heaven in a cloud. That's not going to happen. It says the day of the Lord comes cruel with wrath and indignation and anger, anger of the Lord. And Christ is going to take out all that anger, all that frustration, all those coon Negroes loving Hillary Clinton and That's Donald right. Trump, all those coons loving America, all those coons running around saying, oh, we got to make America better. I want America to burn. By the hands of Christ. That's right. That's what I want. That's what I want. I don't. I want to see black people free. That's what I want. Hispanics and Native Indians. I want to see the true nation of Israel free. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. That's what I want. And it says the day of the Lord is going to come cruel. Man, that's what I'm loving. Let it come cruel. Let Christ come and bring judgment on this wicked place and the white man. Read, brother. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. And destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So that's why we come out black man, Hispanic man, the native Indian man, to wake you up so you won't get destroyed when Christ come and kill this white man and all these heathens that are under us, that we are over us. To wake you up, let you know who you are, black man, Hispanic man, and name any man. Let you know that the white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. That's right. You gotta get that in your mind. Why get that cloud of Christianity off your out of your, out of your head? That we are the real, real Jews. And that the bastard over in Israel. Understand who you are. So that's why we come out to try to wake you up. Because right now we are asleep in this place. God said he's going to destroy the sinners out of it. And if you, if you sit there still living, loving America, and want to join with America and the rest of the world, good, you're going to die too. So that's why we don't want to see you die. We want to see you on those chariots with us. We want to see you back here with us, waking other brothers and sisters up that are destroyed. That's our purpose. Damn, brother, give me Proverbs 11 and 21, brother. You got to understand what this Bible's about. Telling us, warning us. Laws, statutes, and commandments. But we so destroy, we destroy, and the main culprit to destroy us is the white man and Christianity. And loving them, and in that God forsaken Christian church. You get that, brother? Okay, read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 21. Though hand join, hand join in hand. Yeah, there's more warnings for you. Black man, Hispanic man, and every Indian man. Yeah, I know you walk, you walk around with white people. Oh, I got white friends. I got white this and that. Well, though hand joined in hand, God is giving you another warning. Though, like, though you join hands with them and walk with them, we shall never come. Black Lives Matter <laughs> and all that garbage. Though you go hand in hand with the white man, read on. Suck. Though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. The wicked shall not be unpunished. Although you go join in hand and say all white people are not bad, they still going to get punished. Because good, the, the, the other the precept the brother brought out, we gave you, right, prepare slaughter for his children. 
So throw hand joined in hand, the wicked will not be unpunished. For all those for that for the cotton fields, you are going to get punished. You're not going to go unpunished. You will be un you will be punished. Understand, black man, what this Bible is about. It's a lovely thing when you understand who it's talking to, what it's about. Who are the Israelites in the Bible? Who are the people that walked out of Egypt with Moses? All these years we didn't watch the Ten Commandments and thought Charleston Hanson was Moses. We didn't know that Moses was, was, was a black man. We don't know these things. A so-called Haitian, that's who Moses We don't know these things. And Charleston Heston was the devil. <laughs> we didn't know these things. This is how destroyed we are. We are destroyed in this place. Thinking that what? These TV people and the white man is all good. Now, it says, though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not go, shall not be unpunished. They're going to be punished. For all the wickedness that they've done, they're going to be punished. They're going to be punished. What is wicked? What is wicked? Huh? Come with con, sir. Come with, hey, you got any questions, brother? Go to the table. Now, it says the wicked will be now un unpunished. Now, and just like now, just like it said, and I'm um, Job. Um, <coughs> so now, brother, give me that. Read that again. Come with The hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. Now, now, that's for people that will love white people. When you love white people. You still want to join, you still want his hand, no matter what. You can hear it and still won't perceive it. It says, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. You, you will punish. And when you whiff the white man, licking the crust between their toenails, you're going to be punished too. When you're a coon, you're going to be punished too. When you're simple, a simple Negro, you're going to be punished too with the white man. Not my words, the words out of the Bible. Now, don't be a hunt. Now, brother, give me Jeremiah um, 2 and 14. Jeremiah 2 and 14. You understand, this the Bible is a lovely thing when you understand what's this Bible about. You understand, it's about you, black man, the Hispanic man, the neighbor in the man. It's a lovely thing. It's a lovely thing. Because it's warnings telling us not to be, telling, telling us the wrong that we do and the right we should be doing. So now, I'm gonna give you all, this is for all you coons that love the white man. Now, two and 14, brother. Come, come. The book of Jeremiah, chapter two, verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Oh, is Israel a servant? God is asking another question. Black man, Hispanic man, Navy the man, are you a servant? Now, he said, are you a servant? Are you a servant? Why you act like a servant? Why all you want to do is serve the white man? Well, when, when a prophet of the Lord come out on the street and say the white man is the devil the Bible speaks of, you want to know what is evil, what is wicked. <laughs> this is because we destroyed. This is because we destroyed. You didn't ask Creflo well, who was wicked. Uh, you don't ask Barack Obama who was wicked. Was in the office for eight years. But yet you go and do that. You go go and step to the prophets of the Lord. That's because why? You, you wicked. You wicked. And the Bible says you're a homeborn slave. You're a homeborn slave because why? A homeborn slave is love, just loves a master. No matter what, he loves a master. Somebody come against master, he say, oh, don't you do that. That's my master. Now, now God says, is Israel a servant? We act like servants in this place. Run around, well, all you want to do is serve. All you want to do is buy. Don't you want your own? Trying to find something to follow Had loyalty, every man tried to borrow Felt pain, and a lot of sorrow Got betrayed, so packed I didn't even have my heart broke Living confused, about to lose hope Cops got me on the side of the road Like a sideshow, need an antidote before I croak Now I'm setting fire to rhythm and blues Call this guitar smoke 
rebel with no cause, trying to find direction. The world got me vexed. Picked up a bad lick of habit that's hereditary from oppression. Felt like my life was on fire, trying to find an exit. Now look, 10 G's plus a good wreck. Sometimes a follower is a soldier, trying to find a good ship. Plus, when you in hell, how do you excel? Wisdom the breath of life, I don't believe in fairy tale. Listen well to what I tell. No call it can cause pain. Something that a rebel knows very well. Can't you tell I was sent from the Lord? Got a tongue like a two-edged sword.